Hey friends, welcome back to my kitchen. This is Table Full of Joy and I'm Cheryl. And today we are making up a batch of potato soup, loaded potato soup. Um, I'm going to a Christmas party tonight with the ladies from my church. And my husband's gonna be home, so I'm making him a little something special. He loves potato soup, especially with bacon and cheese and all the things in it. So I made, decided to make him a pot of soup. And bonus, this will actually make a full pot, so I won't have to cook dinner tomorrow night either. I'll be able to do some other things that I need to do, which will be super fun for me because I'll have dinner already in the fridge left over from tonight. So we're gonna start with some bacon. We're just gonna come in and cut this into bite-sized pieces. We are actually gonna cook all of the bacon, then we are gonna take it out of our pan. We are gonna put some of it back in after our soup is done. We're gonna leave a little bit of it out for a garnish on our bowls. And so we're gonna get our bacon going here. We're gonna use just the bacon fat in this. We don't need to add any extra oil. I think we'll have enough oil with the bacon. Let me get my pan going now. I need to get this hot. So we're gonna turn that on about seven. I love this potato soup because it has lots of veg. It has carrots and celery and onions and garlic. And even though I don't like onions, the onions that I have are chopped fairly small. So I'm not even gonna notice that they're there. I'm gonna be totally fine to eat this. But I love to have a little bit of chopped carrot and a little bit of chopped celery. And we have been doing a lot of baking today and getting ready for this party. I have um, cookies that I've made, candy that I've made. I have a veggie board I need to make. I still have a cheese ball that I need to make. Um, and I'll be sharing all of those things with you guys. But for today, I just needed to have something very, pretty simple for him to have for dinner so that I can just focus on getting all of my things done for the party. So we're gonna take our bacon, we're gonna put this in our pot, and we are gonna let that start to heat up. Now we are gonna come in and we're gonna get our carrots and our celery and our garlic ready to go because these things are going to cook with in the bacon fat after we move, remove the bacon from the pot. So I'm gonna grab my chopper. I am tired, so I'm gonna take a little bit of help from one of my favorite kitchen tools. And just like that, I have chopped carrots. Ready to go. This is a lifesaver because I would be standing here for 15 minutes cutting carrots and I don't want to do that. So I am taking a little bit of help We're going to cut our celery into smaller pieces so we can fit that into our chopper and we are going to let our chopper do the work for us i love this thing <laughs> there is nothing easier than doing that and coming out with beautiful chunks of carrots and celery, my onions are chopped up from before. These are some of our onions that we processed together and we got these in the freezer so we would have onions when we were ready for some. So these are already diced up nice and small just the way that I like them. So we are gonna look at our bacon. Is looking super super good. I love the smell of bacon. But this is going to take a little while to get done. But it's smelling super super good right now. Nothing better than the smell of bacon, I think. This just looks really good. All right, so while our bacon is cooking, we are going to get started on the rest of our veggies. We are going to dice up our potatoes. We have four russet potatoes. 
and we want these to be in bite-sized pieces. We don't want to have huge chunks of potato. Nobody wants to have to eat their potato soup with a knife and fork. So let's make sure that we are getting some nice bite-sized chunks of potato. And the other thing that I'm going to do with this potato soup is I like to take part of it and puree it in a blender. Or if you have a, um, I can't even think of what it's called, a hand blender. Um, if you have one of those, then you can use one of those, but I don't like to puree all of the soup. That's the problem with using one of those. So I am just gonna put part of this into my blender and I'm gonna mix this up and then I'm gonna add it to the rest of the soup in there so that we end up with some really creamy and we end up with some that is chunky. That is smelling really good. I'm gonna turn that down just a hair so we can get our potatoes finished up before we need to move on to our carrots and our celery. And then like I said, we are gonna strain that bacon because we're gonna use the bacon fat to cook the rest of our veggies and to start our potatoes. But I don't want the bacon overdone. Burnt bacon is not going to be my friend. <laughs> so we're gonna be really careful that we don't burn it. We just need to come back over here every couple minutes and just check it, make sure that it's not sticking, make sure it's not burning. And since our carrots and our celery are so finely chopped already that I'm just gonna go ahead and add our potatoes along with that. So we're just gonna add all of these vegetables together. We're gonna put our onions, our carrots, our celery, our potatoes, and our garlic all in at one time because our pan is gonna be nice and hot. Most of our veggies are super small with the exception of the potatoes, which is fine, that's what we want. We're just gonna add everything in together at one time and we're gonna start the cooking process. The other thing that I'm gonna do is, this is the other reason I love using Better Than Bouillon, is I like to kind of, I guess you would say toast my broth a little bit, I, I don't know if that's the right term, but I like to put this in my pan with something else and let it cook a little bit because I want this to really start to develop and caramelize the flavor of the broth. This is looking like. We have quite a bit of um, fawn on the bottom of our pan, and if you're not sure what fawn is, fawn is where you um, have cooked your meat or your vegetables and you've, you've got a brown layer on the bottom of your pan. That is pure flavor, so don't ever, unless you burn it, that's the only time that you would want to stress about it that you definitely want that brown flavor in the bottom of your pan. But I wanna get this bacon nice and crunchy, because if it isn't crunchy, then um, you are gonna wind up with soggy bacon in your uh, potato soup and nobody wants that. So we're gonna make sure that we get this nice and crispy so that when we take it out, our bacon is crispy for our top but it's also crispy for the ins being put inside the potato salad, or potato soup, potato salad. <laughs> it's not summertime yet. All right, so we have one more to, to go here. And I think by the time we get this potato done, our bacon should be ready for us to pull out of our pot and move forward with everything else. Another thing, you wanna make sure that your potatoes are all the same size. Make sure that they're as close to the same size as you can get them because they're all gonna cook at the same time and you don't want big chunks of potato that aren't done when everything else is done. You want things to really be soft and tender and not end up with big hard chunks in your soup. So we are almost done with this potato. Got just a little piece left to cut. Then I think we're gonna go ahead and strain our bacon the last of our potatoes. Let's look at our bacon real quick. 
All right, so our bacon is looking good. You can see down in this pan, see this brown right here? That is what I was talking about, which is the fawn. That is pure flavor in our soup. So we don't want to lose that. We don't want to burn it. And I think our bacon is just about at that point. I'm going to grab a strainer over here just to make this easy. Let's get a couple of paper towels to strain our bacon on. We're just going to use this thing to strain the fat away from our bacon because we want to leave all of that fat in our pot because this is what is going to cook all of our veggies, including our potatoes. And if there's a couple little pieces of bacon that linger in the pan, it's not a big deal. It's not going to hurt it. It's, it's going to be fine. I try to get all of it out if I can, but occasionally I miss a piece or two here and there. Okay, so we have our, all of our bacon out of our pan. We are ready to go with all of our veggies. I love these flexible cutting mats. So we are gonna put our carrots and our celery and our potatoes. Let's grab our onion. It is defrosted. I took it out of the freezer, uh, I don't know, probably like 15 minutes ago, just long enough for it to start to defrost a little bit. We're gonna take, I'm gonna put in about four cloves of garlic because I want some really good garlic flavor in this. Let's get our skin off there. Let's get, sometimes these bolts of garlic are so hard. Okay, here's one. Get that in there. You can just pull that skin out. That's what I love about this garlic press. You can just pull your skin right out. Just gonna set that over here. We'll clean up our mess after we get all of our garlic in here. garlic clove here. I'm going to make sure that we're not getting any paper, like I just did it just a second ago. We don't want any of the garlic paper in our soup. Do another one. And let's do one more. A couple of these were pretty small. We're gonna do this one. We'll do this one last one right here and this will be good. I think we'll have enough garlic in here. All right, we're gonna grab our spoon. We're just gonna give this a good stir. Oh my gosh, the garlic smell is already coming through. It smells so amazing. This smells so, so good. You can see we have our carrots and our onions and our celery and our garlic and our potatoes in here. This is going to be super tasty. We're going to let this cook for just a couple of minutes. So we are going to add, before we add water, we're going to add about a tablespoon, probably a heaping tablespoon of our better than bouillon. Just a little bit more. Let's just kind of wipe this off. And we're going to stir this around in our pot with our veggies before we add our water to it because I want to have this broth have a chance to really get coated in all this stuff. We are starting to pull up our fawn off the bottom of our pan. I'll bring you in a little bit closer so you can see this. So you can see right here, we're starting to pull this up. 
all of this beautiful flavor down in here is starting to pull up. And it will pull up even more once we put our water in. So we're gonna add our water to our broth. And then it's gonna be ready to just simmer. We're gonna add a little bit of salt. We don't need to go too heavy with our salt because the broth has got quite a bit of salt in it. So I'm gonna do just about a half a tablespoon of salt to start off with. The other thing before I add some water to this is I'm gonna add just a little bit of flour. Now, if you are gluten-free and you can't have the flour, you can certainly use arrowroot. You can use cornstarch. Um, there's a couple other ones out there and I can't think of them right off the top of my head, but that's the two major ones is arrowroot or cornstarch. If you are gluten-free and you cannot have the flour that I'm using to thicken this. So we are just gonna let this flour cook for a minute, just like with anything, if you're cooking with flour, when you're making sauces or gravies or anything like that, you wanna give it a minute to cook while you're waiting to add your liquid because if you don't, you're gonna have a raw flour taste and that's just not a very good flavor. We're building all of this delicious flavor in our soup. So the last thing we wanna do is to have a raw flour taste. All right, so we're gonna start off with two cups of water and let's see where we're at. Looks like I'm gonna go another two cups of water. Okay, that looks good to me. So this now is gonna have the lid put on it. It's gonna simmer. We're gonna let this go for, I'm gonna say probably 30 minutes. Um, so that our, veg our veggies can get tender, they can get soft, everything can kind of combine in flavor, develop some really tasty flavors in this soup. And then we're gonna come back to it. We're gonna add part of this to our blender. We're gonna blend it up and then we're gonna add it all together. We'll add some bacon, we'll put in some cheese and we'll finish this off and we're just gonna let it simmer. It'll be ready when my husband's ready to have dinner while I'm at the party tonight. All right, so I just pulled our potato soup off the stove and it is looking beautiful. So we are gonna take part of this, we're gonna put this into our blender and we are gonna blend this. We're making a little bit of a mess, but it's fine. This is how you get a thick potato soup but you don't have to add quite as much cream to it because these potatoes and veggies are going to puree, they're gonna give it a good texture, but we're still gonna have enough chunks in the bottom. So because this is hot liquid, we're not overloading our blender either because it will explode. So we are gonna turn this to right there and we're going to blend this up. All right, this looks beautiful. This is a nice creamy soup. Let's grab some milk because we are going to put milk in this after we pour this in. So let me grab a spatula real fast. Because we need to be able to get all of this out of this blender. This looks beautiful. This looks really, really good. You can see how creamy this is in here. And we're not gonna have to add nearly as much milk to make this a super creamy potato soup. Now the fun thing, or the nice thing about this doing the pureed potatoes in this is if you are vegan, call it good right here. You don't have to do anything else to it. It's perfectly fine, just like it is. You don't need to put milk in it unless you really want to. I am going to take a little bit of milk. It's probably about a quarter of a cup. 
so it's not too much. And we're just going to swish this around in our blender so that we're getting all of this off the bottom. We're going to put that in there. Get all of this out. It's back on our blender. And we're going to give this a little bit of a stir so that this, this just looks phenomenal. This looks so, so good. We're going to give it a quick taste because I want to see where we are for salt. We haven't put any pepper in it yet. We need to still put pepper in. Oh, wow. That is phenomenal soup. I'm going to call it good with salt. We're going to put in some fresh pepper. Just about like that. We're going to put in almost all of our bacon. We're going to save a little bit out for on top of our bowls of soup. I think that's probably good. We'll save that out. We'll mix in this. And I haven't even put cheese in this yet. And I don't think I'm going to actually put the cheese in it. I think it just tastes fantastic the way it is. So I'm going to just leave it. I'll grate some cheese. We can put some cheese on top of it when we serve it. We can put a little sour cream on it, all of those things. But this is phenomenal soup. All right, friends, I want you to see how beautiful this potato soup is. That is beautiful soup. Perfect, creamy, delicious. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me in my kitchen today. It means so much to me that you guys would come and spend time with me. If you're new around here, please, before you leave, give my video a like and please subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on any of the fun things that we do in my kitchen. I hope you join me again and have a great day, friends.